So today, today we will be discussing finance, as in the uh, the discipline of finance. Um, if I was to put it more specifically, uh, the CT2 sessions would have to do with corporate finance. What are we going to discuss today? Yeah. So in this chapter, we will discuss finance and the objectives of an organization. Relationship between the stakeholders in an organization, including lenders and investors. Uh, role and effects of the capital markets, and there, there are a couple of theories which make finance rather interesting. I'll be taking you through them. Agency theory, the theory of the maximization of shareholder wealth, and capital markets. So, uh, what is finance? Let's start with the question. Um, if you were to start a business, what do you need? I mean, I'd appreciate if you could type in some responses in the chat window. Capital. Before that, you need money. Okay. Uh, I'm getting a couple of responses. Poonam says it's capital, human as well as physical. Uh, Satyavati says it's capital. Trajan says it's money. Uh, what about, you know, the assets which would create whatever you expect to sell? So you get that asset from capital and obviously you need human resources to operate that asset so that you can generate the products and services that you expect to sell. Uh, somebody says, let's start with the idea. Uh, in the slide you can see I have put in shareholders, board of directors, senior managers and within the brackets I have written certain other things. I said shareholders are owners, board of directors protect shareholders interest and senior managers are the ones who implement decisions. Can you identify some other stakeholders within an organization? Creditors. Moonan says creditors. Employees, debtors, creditors, employees, okay. So there are various other stakeholders. Lenders, banks, financial institutions, so, you know, there are so many shareholders, so many stakeholders. What about the external uh, stakeholders? Uh, what about the regulatory bodies? Poonam says actually everyone associated with the company is a stakeholder in the company. That's pretty much right. But what about those not associated with the company? What about uh, regulatory agencies? What about uh, the society at large? Ultimately, everybody becomes a stakeholder. Um, so, we'll, we'll identify some other stakeholders also. Lenders, junior management, other employees, customers, regulators. Uh, everybody is a stakeholder in the organization. Now, I said there could be conflict of interest. What does conflict of interest mean? It means that a decision which is in the best interest of one particular shareholder is not in the best interest or is not perceived to be in the best interest of all the stakeholders. That is where a conflict could arise. Now the finance function has to deal with such conflict. It has to, in fact, act in a manner that such conflicts are minimized. Stakeholders have diverging objectives. The shareholder expects a high return on investment. What does, what do managers expect? They expect bonus, uh, since they are the ones who are implementing decisions, in fact, making, uh, you know, uh, uh, having most control over the business. They are the ones who look for large businesses. Even if it is making losses, that's not a problem. So, so long as I'm managing a two billion company, I'm fine. Even if the shareholders, uh, are going to make a loss. As long as my business empire expands, that's, fi that's fine. Lenders. Lenders would expect safety. Uh, if I had lent you money, I'd want that back in time with the interest that I wanted on that money. Now, these diverging objectives may lead to conflict. 
there are theories that explain the kind of in conflicts that can exist within an organization. The first theory is quite important from your course point of view, it's the agency theory, and then we'll also look at the contractual theory. Uh, can you type in some responses as to what agency theory could be regarding? And I hear some typing sounds, so I'll wait for the response before I close it. Manager acts as agents of shareholders. Uh, that is what Satyavati tells me, is, is right. Uh, uh, so, as in previous slide, conflict of interest. So, yeah, that's what I'm uh, telling you. The agency theory can explain some conflict of interest. Conflict of interest between managers and employees also. That is what Poonam tells me. This is also right. Now, who is the principal and who is the agent within the organizational setting? Managers act as agents of shareholder owners. So, owners are, shareholders are principals. Satyavati has already told me that. Great. So, agency theory uh, has, uh, I mean, uh, if I was to put it in one uh, single bullet, I'll say that principals employ agents in order to manage something which is owned by, again, the principal. That's why principal is the owner. So, uh, you can look, you can view shareholders as being principals while managers are their agents and the managers run the company for the shareholders. Uh, do you see a role for the board here? What does the board do? The board of directors? In a large company, there may be many shareholders. So, in that case, it's not possible for the shareholders to directly... Yeah. So, Timothy tells me they represent the shareholders, which is right. So, in a large company, there are many shareholders. It may not be possible for every shareholder to, uh, to provide guidance directly to the managers. And the board of directors representing the shareholders to ensure that the management works in the best interest of the shareholders. Now, the principal agent theory suggests that shareholders are principals and managers are on, almost like agents. And managers have better insights into the functioning of the company. So, at times, they may make decisions which are not in the best interest of the shareholders, but are in their own in, uh, best interest, as a result of which, the interests of the shareholders are compromised. Uh, within, again, corporate India, do you, do we, do you remember any uh, recent example where such a thing happened or unraveled? Think of Satyam computers. Why, uh, why is the board also being held responsible? Why did the board members resign? Obviously, uh, uh, the implication was that they were not able to safeguard the shareholders, the broader shareholders' interest, and some decisions were made uh, uh, by uh, by the promoters who had a very uh, who had a minority uh, ownership in the company, but uh, but uh, were, uh, were 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 positioned as executives. They were responsible for decision making, and as a result of that. Uh, uh, certain things happen. You can also think of senior managers being a principal and junior staff being agents. Now, given that there is a conflict of interest, I go on and suggest that every manager would act in his own self-interest and against the interest of the shareholders. But that is not the case. Most of the companies, there is an alignment, a broad alignment of shareholder interest with the interest of the managers. Why? Uh, any responses? Why would the manager not act in his own self-interest as against the interest of the shareholders? Mission statement of the company. Company tells me it has to do with the mission statement of the company. It's not entire, entirely wrong. Uh, okay, Poonam, I'm repeating the question for you. 